But first of all, the lawyer acting for the family of a six-year-old Halesworth boy who died of meningitis has accused Suffolk's Ambulance Trust of being dismissive about their case. Oliver Hall died the day after his symptoms began in October 2017. He'd been examined by two paramedics and two doctors who failed to diagnose the infection early enough. An inquest jury concluded in June this year that his death was due to a gross failure to provide basic medical treatment and Suffolk coroner Nigel Parsley called for urgent improvements to prevent further deaths. However, Oliver's family don't believe the East of England Ambulance Trust in particular have taken Mr Parsley's comments seriously enough, as their lawyer, Kashmir Upal, told me earlier. The issues that have been identified as the coroner as needing to be addressed to prevent future deaths have not, in our view, been taken seriously enough. Um, there's, the, the ambulance service uh, have said that changes will be made to some elements um, of their systems, but not until 2020, And that the reason why um, all of the information was not provided to the um, ambulance drivers, the ambulance crew, is that to avoid overburdening them with excessive or non-relevant information. And um, how can... Um, a rash suggestive of septicemia not be relevant information and or be excessive information. I mean, who is making that judgment about what's relevant and what's excessive? It just doesn't seem that the severity of the situation and the need for changes as identified by the coroner have been um, recognised by the um, ambulance, the Association of Ambulance Chief Executives' response. Um, and it, it, it worries the, the family and ourselves as to whether there will be future deaths because this needs some urgent action to be taken now. And you'd like the coroner to step in again, wouldn't you? Well, obviously these responses have gone to the coroner and he can um, make a decision on what further steps need to be taken. But as I say, it, it just doesn't seem to be enough to, to in, in light of the, the severity of the situation. Also, the fact that the family were, and the, the, the GP wasn't told that there would be a 40-minute wait for the ambulance... And again, the information provided is just that, well, it, you know, it, it depends on the, the number of ambulances being used. Surely they should say, yeah, in that situation, it should have been made clear to the, the GP that there was, it was going to be 40 minutes was the standard time for a Category 2, and it could potentially be longer, so that the, the GP and the family could have made an informed decision. We appreciate that, obviously, that there are lots of competing resources here, but it's a case of the most urgent cases getting the need and help that they need at that point rather than well there's a system and procedures that we have to follow what about the family themselves um, i mean how are they feeling at the moment it, this can't be easy far from it oh it's incredibly difficult i mean the fact that the, the current the inquest has obviously taken place that was an incredibly traumatic process for them to go through um thankfully the coroner um provided a verdict which included neglect um, and has issued these regu- regulation 28 reports I think it's the use of the language almost, you know, non-relevant information, burdening somebody. Well, this family, the the mother identified that Oliver had um, a non-blanching rash. She questioned whether he had meningitis on so many occasions. Uh, And again, it seems to be dismissive of what the family was saying. And I think I think we're just disappointed, really, and the family are disappointed. So what's the latest as far as uh, the legal proceedings are concerned? Clearly, now that the inquest has taken place, we can um, proceed with the, the claim. And, and the claim is proceeding in relation to, obviously, Oliver's death and the, the trauma that it's caused for the family psychologically. Um, you know, the parents, as you can imagine, are absolutely devastated by what's happened to them. Um, and, you know, life is for them it will never be the same. And it's important that... Um, that their losses are, are compensated and that they are in a position to move on with their lives. But I think until this issue of prevention of future deaths is properly addressed, because it, it, they don't want Oliver's death to be in vain. They want to make sure that there are system changes. No other family, therefore, has to go through what they've been through. That's Kashmir Upal, clinical negligence lawyer at Shoesmiths, talking to me earlier. We have now received a statement from the East of England Ambulance Trust. It reads, We would like to extend our deepest sympathies to the family of Oliver Hall. We have given careful consideration to the inquest proceedings and the coroner's comments and are conducting an internal review of this case.